Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Well, without further ado, let us bring into the conversation our first guest, Dr. Alex Nwuba, President, uh, President of uh, Aircraft and Pilots Association of Nigeria. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank uh, you for having me here. Yes, so good to have you. Uh, let's start with where we should actually start. Uh, some people feel like it's congratulations to Nigeria. Nigeria has finally arrived. But then the level of controversy that surrounds it makes it such that when you hear that, you're kind of like not able to smile. You, can, you practically don't know how to react to that. So help us understand what should be the reaction of Nigeria to the idea of having a national carrier that a lot of people seem to have so much controversy around it. Thank you. Uh, you see me smiling when you mention the word <laughs> Nigeria Air. And you'd want to want, you'd wonder, obviously, why I'm smiling. The reason I'm smiling is because um, due to the darkness by which this process came about, this led to a lot of conjecture. People don't even understand uh, how a government that serves the people is able to float a national carrier, which we all want. And then when it comes, we're all confused. Is it Nigeria Air? Is it Ethiopian Airlines? It has the painting of Nigeria Air on it, but it has Ethiopian registration on the aircraft. And so this is just the fallout of a last minute push of this minister to come up, bring about a dream he's had that runs against all modes of common sense. He could have just simply said, you know, it's too late now. We've been doing this for seven years. We didn't do it. We can't do it in 24 hours. We can't push it through the system and then uh, have something that we can totally be proud of. Nigerians want a national carrier. Nigeria wants the expanded airspace. The question often asked is, why do we need so many airlines? And that's because we seem to not remember that the nature of domestic aviation in the future is not just about Nigeria. There's a single air transport market. So the domestic aviation in Africa is in Nigeria will be all of Africa and so Nigeria itself must be prepared for that market space as well as we're prepared for trade within the region uh, we are the largest land mass on earth and how do you get around that land mass primarily by air would be the board of doing that and so if Nigeria is not prepared to participate in that economy others would move in and that's the objection that the industry has had to this concept of the minister of the so-called white airplane with pe uh, peelable, maybe peelable stripes that doesn't represent what the wishes are of the Nigerian people. Right. Now, of course, you did mention the Ethiopia Airlines, which, of course, that's the direction this is going to go in terms of forming it with the... Uh, I would imagine that the immediate concerns around it would be around decimating the domestic industry... Absolutely. Um, and ...as well as likely capital flight. Right. But could you add some more color to some of the other knock-on effects? Right. And, and are, there any also, are there also any merits around it that we're not seeing? Well, let's start with uh, the minister said that he invited carriers from around the world to partner Nigeria on the launch of a national carrier. And then he came back and said only one airline signified interest. How can that be? All of the airlines of the world know the importance of Africa as a continent, the lack of connectivity in the region, the limited amount of trade within the region. And so there exists a future opportunity for the air transport sector on the continent of which Nigeria, by its population and its economy, is supposed to lead. So why didn't they show up? And then suddenly we hear the share biggest, the, uh, the only uh, person interested in this is Ethiopian Airlines. Of course, Ethiopian Airlines understands that if we have a a vibrant air sector, Nigerian air sector, which we do now with the private sector led, it's private sector led unlike many countries of the world. If we have that, it threatens their own position. And so they chose to come in and become the biggest shareholder in a non-competitive process. We'd have to call it essentially a non-competitive process. And what does that do? It forestalls Nigeria's possibility to be a leading aviation economy. It doesn't solve the challenge we've been having of capital flight, like you described, where most of the revenue, most of the flights out of Nigeria are carried on by foreign carriers. And so now we have a debt to these communities and countries of over $800 million. And so in addressing that, we don't by giving our own national carrier to a foreign-owned operator who takes the majority share. So while we say he owns 49%, nobody else owns anything bigger than 49%. So they're the majority shareholder and will direct the cost of that airline. Only, obviously, to direct the cost is to bring people to Ethiopia on Ethiopian airlines to satisfy their economy. So we don't gain anything by that. If we had a successful Nigerian career that was domestic, 
tax revenue is not multi-jurisdictional, you know? It is only for Nigeria. So if we have a vibrant sector, we have employment for Nigeria, we have tax revenue to Nigeria, we reduce the capital flight, capital outflow of dollars for Nigeria. So we had been telling this minister, this your plan would not work. I had one mini, only one meeting with the head of his uh, project for this airline, and I told him, this is not the best for us, but all they were trying to do was convince me to go along with this project. The entire airline industry, if you ask the airlines, the airlines took the, uh, the Nigeria Air Company and the minister and Ethiopian Airlines to court to stop the process. The court ordered a stop of the process, and today we see an airplane flying in defying that court order and saying that we are doing the right thing. What signal is Nigeria sending? We're just decimating the economy, decimating the industry, decimating the... Ethiopian is coming in essentially to kill the domestic airlines. And they don't want to die. They want to remain vibrant and competitive, competitive in the region. So you see absolutely no merit to it? Absolutely zero. Okay, so the minister says he scored 100% in all of his projects. The industry scored him zero, but for one thing. Which is? Which is that he was very good in appointing good heads of agencies, but did not let them do their jobs. Did not give them the governance structures to give them the independence to do the jobs very well, even though they try their best. Nigeria Air has a great CEO that can put together a great airline in the form Nigerians would like to have. Do you, have you ever heard a word from him? Have, do you know who he is? Nigeria has a fan MD that he sacked recently that had great visions for the economy. In particular, he set up a committee to explore how to push Nigeria to number one in the export sector, where we are currently number five. He's gone, okay? Nigeria, Nigeria continues to have a great NCAA director general who is stopping this nonsense, essentially. But the guy is being threatened by SAC. The minister wants to bulldoze his way to get what's wrong for Nigeria simply because it satisfies his ego. So why, why are the people around him refusing to speak out and say, this is not acceptable, this cannot go on? <laughs> this is Nigeria, whoever speaks wrong about his boss, right or wrong. It's only outsiders that can come out and say, gentlemen, this is wrong, we have to stop this, and that's what's going on. There's a court order stopping it. Uh, the court, not just an individual, the court of Nigeria says, do not proceed with this. And the minister, with impunity, goes ahead. And we see the result with the arrival of the aircraft in Nigeria to say, well, not you can't do anything. So where do you put the blame? The yeah. minister or the president who appointed the minister and who most likely, or do you think the president did not know that all of this shenanigan was going on in the last uh, eight years? Well, you know, this has been an eight-year project, and then we yes. want to make, get it done in two days. You know, where, what's been going on all of this time? The minister is essentially a representative of the government of the president who represents the government, which is the, uh, the uh, symbol of the, uh, of the government. So ultimately everything, there's a famous American saying the box stops here at the president's desk. So it does stop at the president's desk, uh, but this minister is considered too powerful even to be, to be challenged by anybody. And so he's essentially getting his way to the detriment of what's the interest of the Nigerian people and the Nigerian state. So your organization, sorry, Abby, uh, your organization, um, those who are owners of aircrafts and uh, association of pilots and all that, do you people think, do you members of this association think that Hadi Sirika, the Minister of Aviation, has a vested interest in this, or why would he be doing this at a time like this that smirks of nothing other than desperation? Well, uh, I, I work, I represent many, not, I do not represent, I am in many organizations, the Aviation Roundtable and other aviation industries. We have aviation forums where we have these discussions. I can barely find anybody in support of this so-called Nigeria Air, except, of course, his favorite people who, you know, when you lead, you find a ton of people around you that just say yes to everything and no to nothing simply because they are uh, benefiting from it. W one cannot really say what is... Uh, uh, encouraging the minister to go ahead in conflict with the entire industry. He can argue that the, the domestic airlines are doing this because they want to protect themselves. And that's their right. And that's the right thing. Since the failure of Nigerian Airways, Nigeria has continued to have a vibrant and growing. We may have challenges. And those challenges, again, are the result of the fault of the minister. He has failed to, unlike other economies of the world, step in to support these airlines after COVID. Uh, by programs. His acts can only be deemed nothing short of selfish. That would be the word I would use most appropriate at this time because I can't accuse him of anything without fact. And so uh, I would not go as far as to label it the way most people are labeling it. The information is out there in the public domain. 
But the fact remains that this minister has gone against common sense. He has gone against the interest of the industry. Here's a minister that came full in, to an industry where people said, look, the challenges we've had is that we've not had somebody from the sector leading the sector at a ministerial level. And so now we have an aviator at the helm. And we are all shocked, the entire industry is shocked, to find that the man we think would be our savior has become the one that is leading us to the ditch. Fortunately, we're at a turning point. There'll be a new administration in a few days. We've reached out to the administration to say it is time to call to order this entire process that is not in the interest of Nigeria. It, it has, all we are asking for, the entire airline industry, aviation industry, general aviation, everything is, well, let us do what is best for Nigeria. We all want a national carrier simply to expand our reach on a global basis to position ourselves for the single air transport market, to be competitive under the African continental free trade area, and also to reach other parts of the world so that we are the ones that are the net beneficiaries of the income that comes from this industry. That's all the industry is asking for. Nobody is saying they should stop registering airlines. After all, yesterday, a new airline, Banani, was launched. Nobody complained about it. New airlines have been coming along. United, Niger yes, the minister said under him, many more airlines have come along. But this action of Ethiopian airlines has the consequence of decimating the entire industry and reducing Nigeria's position in the aviation area to zero. Well, uh, surely, you know, the actions of the aviation minister has been described as a flagrant uh, disobedience of the orders of the Nigerian High Court. But could you bring us up to speed on what the next course of order would be in terms of, especially because we have the new administration coming in, how is that going to work? What's the entire picture we have there? Well, this is what has happened. The, 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 the court has ordered the minister to stop action on Nigerian air until we can determine whether it's being done in the best interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. That's all AON has asked for. Okay, they haven't said stop the project, they said stop, let's have a conversation about it. And the minister has defied that order, not just by continuing the process, but throwing in our face a new national carrier that doesn't meet any of our aspirations, bringing it to Nigeria and saying, here it is. So that's a flagrant abuse of court process. So obviously, the aviation industry, or AON in particular, will seek further redress with the court in asking them to see, here's evidence of disobedience of the action of the minister. Now, where do we go from here? We have an airplane that has come into Nigeria under the name Nigeria Air Registered Ethiopian. Nobody knows the facts. We don't even know the agreements reached with Ethiopian Airlines. We don't know if at the end of the day, if this is stopped, there will be another situation where Nigeria will have to pay penalties for default on contractual basis because nobody knows what the contracts are. And we're already talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in, in, uh, in dues due to be paid for flagrant or what we consider abuse of contracts. So we may find ourselves in that situation further. So going forward, we need to say, we need a national carrier. There's no question about it. I'm in support of it. Everybody in the country is in support of it. But it must be done in such a way that it addresses the needs of our national carrier and the domestic existing private carriers. There are ways to achieve that. And so we're hoping that the next administration will look at this situation and say, OK, enough of this nonsense. Let's have what works. Bring everybody to the table. What do we need to do in this sector to get it right? Because we do need to compete on a regional and global basis. And we need to put that structure in place regardless. You see, we came late to the African continental free trade area. And we ended up with the Secretariat, ended up in Ghana. We ended up playing a minor role in what will be the next phase of global trade. We can't afford to do that in the aviation space. We need to take the right actions. This president that comes in needs to sit down, appoint a minister that will engage the industry and do what's in the best interest of the nation. So if you now look at where we are today and say we have not done well so far, what will be your assessment of the Hadis Rika years of managing the aviation industry? Because it's almost, I can't think of any other minister that has spent eight years in office None, to actually. manage. Right. I can't think of any. So in view of that, he's had so much time. How well has it done in managing the sector? Well, uh, ALT put out a report saying we would have scored you a zero, but for the fact that you appointed good leaders in your agencies and parastatals. And we continue to um, applaud and encourage these people to continue to do well. Having said that, now, he had a roadmap. It's not like he came to this job blind. He had a roadmap that was there before which he added to it. He had the concept of an aerotropolis, but he described it as the addition of movie theaters, shops, and malls. We don't need more movie theaters, shops, and malls. What we need are industrial complexes that 
fused with the aviation sector to create economic opportunities that grow exports for Nigeria. And that's been a key focus of the former, the former uh, uh, managing director of the Federal Airport Authority, and it's been continued by the incoming managing director to do what will be, that will be the good fusion for the aerotropolis. His intention was to demolish all of the facilities at the airport to move fan uh, officials and other officials of the various parastatals to Abuja. In the case where they had moved people, NSIB, they didn't provide them offices. They didn't provide them accommodation. They weren't even giving the allowances. It was to your, to your tents, you know, basically. That's not leadership. And so while he may be, and there's really no justification to move these agencies out of Lagos to Abuja, we hope the president will not do that. Uh, the, the, Lagos is the most vibrant airport for aviation, and so these agencies need to be there to draw that forward. He had a plan for an aviation leasing company, but his vision was not in sync with what was on the best interest of the growth of the economy. And so he, he, marked, he, did, he just launched a new terminal, which was to expand. He did well in opening up of new terminals that were started way before him. But like the president did with uh, the Niger Bridge, he opened up these terminals. And even though the Lagos one is barely usable, the design was faulty, the implementation was wrong. Uh, he, he will not blame him entirely for that. But they, that's something he should have resolved. This minister should have focused on solving problems and creating working solutions, which he did not do. And that's what we are hopeful that the Deputy Minister will do, is to say, there are plans on the table. How do we modify them? How do we make them better? Look, at the end of the day, what do we want to achieve? We want to create enough jobs for our people. If we have a vibrant sector, we would employ hundreds of thousands of individuals across the various airports of the country. We will do that. We will generate billions of dollars to complement what Dangote is, will do with the refinery because we can be the uh, transport company for the region. During COVID, we saw the role Ethiopian Airlines played in providing medicines and all kinds of facilities. We saw the growth of e-commerce, which required air transport. These are the opportunities that lay before us. But what we need is visionary leadership in the sector to achieve what would be in the best interest of the economy, not to be sold as slaves to our brothers who have, who have gotten ahead of us in that process. All right, just very briefly before we wrap up, there have also been some concerns around the process of acquiring the airline operating certificates for mm -hmm. Nigeria, which, of course, is we know publicly to be at stage one. Contrary to what the minister is saying, which is will take off in two days. Saying, yeah, stage five. Would you happen to have any insight as to what really the status quo is? Okay, um, every airline must go to a multi-stage uh, process for certification to determine that the operations will be safe and will be carried out along the business plan submitted under via the economic regulations. So it will be regulated to ensure abo above and every above everything else the safety of the operation. And that's a multi-stage process. The first stage is the essentially to introduce who the accountable managers would be. Then you submit your manuals of operations because aviation is really self-regulating. It just have over, it has, has oversight of the regulatory authority. And so rather than going through these steps, which the minister is in charge of ensuring across the entire sector, he wanted to circumvent the entire process simply to achieve in three days what he wasn't able to achieve in eight days. And that is wrong. That is poor, bad leadership. When you are supposed to be the party that ensures that the things work right and you become the one that overrides them, whether it's in the court or in the process for which this airline should be flying. So Nigeria Air, airplane is here. We don't know what will happen to it under a new administration. But I think now that the, the managing director, like I said, he's always hired capable individuals. The managing director will now have the responsibility of going through the appropriate process if we can first address the legal issues that will allow the appropriate process for the certification of an airline and hopefully will modify the plans and the ownership structure to suit the best interest of Nigeria. All right, Mr. Mwaba, I want to thank you so much for being here with us this morning and sharing this insights with us. We hope for the best. Thank you.